Uh, for those of you that weren't here yesterday, my name is Molly. I'm a grassroots organizer with Rural Vermont, where I've spent the last 10 years or so working with Vermont's community of farmers and farm workers to listen and hear from them about what's working, what isn't, and how we can collaborate and work together to make things better. And we work a lot in the policy and regulatory world, primarily. And I have a very wonderful sense of Vermont's really robust network of community food providers and agroecological farmers. Through my work with Rural Vermont, I've been working with Via Campesina for a few years now. And in January, I had the honor of being invited to Mexico to an agroecological and movement building school where I got to meet my friend Freddy and Jesus and many other, Monica, many other people that are here with us today. And I was so inspired by that experience because what's happening at these agroecology and movement building schools is building our political power. We're teaching and learning about how we can work with agroecological principles and be kind to the earth as we produce our food and nourish each other. And we're building people power to grow the movement so we can all have a livable future. <laughs> Something that I have noticed in Vermont is how isolating farming can be. We don't have as many of these opportunities for people to come together to be able to get off the farm and to grow that power and make changes to the scale and the extent that we need it. So when I got to meet Freddie and many friends that are involved in these schools elsewhere, it filled my heart with such an immense inspiration that we could maybe do that here and work together to co-create something as community-driven and grassroots as is happening in other parts of the world. And so we hatched an idea. And we're at the very, very beginning of it. This weekend marks the beginning, and you all are part of that moment of starting this. And so this school, if it's going to be relevant to people here in Vermont and regionally and be part of potentially a larger network where we can support other communities to do this work and change it around and adapt it and make it relevant to them, then we can create a network and grow this strength and grow this power and lean into the support from our international comrades that have been doing this for a long time. I'm going to ask Freddie now to talk a little bit about the structure of how we've been having these conversations and doing this work. And then we're going to spend some time here both in small groups and together, talking about what this school would need to look like here for it to be relevant to our communities. Does that sound good? All right. Okay. Gracias. Buenas tardes. También para quienes eh, no estuvieron ayer ni en la mañana, mi nombre es Freddy Congo, soy ecuatoriano, pero estoy radicado en México, eh, acompañando procesos formativos y organizativos desde la Universidad Campesina del Sur, UNICAM Sur, y la Unión de Pueblos de Morelos. Eh, y tuvimos la suerte de recibir a una articulación de jóvenes eh, de la vía campesina Norteamérica en nuestro espacio en la Unicam Sur en el mes de febrero uh, y conocimos a muchos compañeros, compañeras eh, 
inspirados en la necesidad, en las ganas de eh, seguir construyendo, seguir impulsando eh, la agroecología y la soberanía alimentaria. Uh, luego se constituyó eh, un, un colectivo, un grupo eh, de varias compañeras eh, eh, que están aquí. Algunos nos llegaron y empezamos a discutir, analizar la posibilidad de construir eh, o a reflexionar sobre la necesidad de impulsar eh, un proceso de formación agroecológica en Vermont y se acordó realizar este espacio presencial hoy eh, aquí porque llevamos poco más de seis meses de chats, de reuniones en Zoom, eh, una vez cada semana durante seis meses discutiendo y debatiendo y construyendo a partir de las experiencias eh, que cada quien tiene en sus espacios. Y lo que quiero plantearles hoy, y a partir de las reflexiones que hemos escuchado estos días que estamos aquí, eh, es los avances de este trabajo, de este colectivo, que lo llamamos hasta ahora Coordinación Política Pedagógica. Eh, primero, a partir de una serie de preguntas que nos planteamos. Eh, primero decíamos, ¿por qué es importante, por qué es necesario hacer formación agroecológica? Uh, o si es importante, o si es necesario, o no hacer formación agroecológica. Entonces, hicimos un listado como de 20 preguntas de ese tipo. Eh, ¿Con quiénes haríamos esa formación agroecológica? ¿Quiénes serían los estudiantes o los educandos, educandas? ¿Quiénes serían los educadores, educadoras? ¿Cuáles serían las temáticas que trabajaríamos? ¿Cuál sería la modalidad que se trabajaría? Y ahí eh, nos nutrimos eh, mucho y un poco de experiencias previas que ya existen en Latinoamérica, impulsadas por la vía campesina desde hace más de 15 años, que son los Institutos Agroecológicos Latinoamericanos, eh, por sus siglas IALAS. Uh, empezó el primer IALA en Venezuela entre el... Eh, 2005, 2007. Uh, luego surgió otro Yala en Brasil, simultáneamente, luego en Paraguay, eh, y ahora ya hay Yalas en Chile. Aquí está una compañera del Yala de Chile, eh, en Colombia, en Nicaragua. Y es una estrategia que tiene la vía campesina para ir multiplicando la educación y la formación agroecológica. Eh, con las y los campesinos. Y esta discusión de este colectivo, de este grupo, eh, digo, se ha nutrido mucho de esas experiencias, teniendo claro, diría alguien, que no es calco ni copia, no es copy paste. ¿Sí? Hay un camino que alguien ya hizo y podemos recuperar, agarrar, rescatar lo valioso de esos procesos, pero tiene que ajustarse a la realidad local. Y si hay una iniciativa, una propuesta de construir una escuela agroecológica en Vermont y una red de escuelas agroecológicas en Estados Unidos, eh, modestamente desde Latinoamérica contribuimos y aportamos con la experiencia recorrida de estos dialas para que ustedes construyan su propio proceso que responda a su realidad histórica, política, cultural, ambiental, eh, y que sirva realmente eh, para lo que ustedes necesiten. En ese sentido, ahí, eh, este colectivo ha alcanzado algunos acuerdos, algunas comprensiones básicas de lo que podría ser una escuela de agroecología en Vermont. Uno... Eh, eh, de los más importantes considero es que una escuela de agroecología recupere, rescate los principios y los valores, las comprensiones que sobre agroecología y soberanía alimentaria tiene construido la vía campesina como este movimiento global que aglutina al campesinado eh, a nivel mundial. 
y que tiene que ver con muchos elementos. Y en la mañana, mientras Cali eh, hablaba aquí sobre economía solidaria, hubieron intervenciones interesantes que hacían repensar algo eh, que es clave. Y es que no podemos pensar en agroecología ni soberanía alimentaria si no pensamos en tierra y territorio. Si no pensamos en semillas, en defensa de semillas. Eh, si no pensamos en los saberes y en los conocimientos ancestrales de nuestros pueblos. Si no pensamos en relaciones justas de, eh, eh, de producción y en nuestras estructuras de dirección, en, en, en relaciones... Eh, horizontales u holísticas eh, que podamos eh, plasmar en nuestras estructuras. Entonces, esos son como principios básicos que consideramos. Otro elemento eh, importante que ya mencionaba tiene que ver con que estos procesos, estas escuelas tienen que ser sentidos necesitados por la gente local para que sean útiles. Jesús nos, nos dejó un mensaje ayer en su intervención de los abuelos. Decía, uno de los abuelos de los fundadores de la organización Boricua nos dijo, si es necesario, tiene que ser posible. Y yo recupero eso. Eh, si es necesario que tengamos sistemas alimentarios justos eh, para todas, para todos, para todes. Eh, si es necesario que tengamos la capacidad y el derecho de producir y de consumir como queramos, entonces tiene que ser posible hacerlo. Y esa es la invitación que este colectivo de compañeras, compañeros que han estado trabajando esta propuesta queremos dejarles. Que soñemos, que hagamos el ejercicio de cerrar los ojos y nos proyectemos a cinco meses, a un año, a diez años y pensemos cómo queremos que sea nuestro campo, cómo queremos estar produciendo, cómo queremos estar consumiendo. Y si una escuela de agroecología o una red de escuelas de agroecología pueda ser una herramienta, no la única, que pueda ser una herramienta que nos permita a jóvenes, no jóvenes, a adultos, niños, a, para construir una conciencia colectiva, una conciencia comunitaria que nos permita eh, desaprender, que nos permita quitarnos eh, vicios que traemos de un sistema capitalista de consumismo, de individualismo, de exclusión, y nos permita construir eh, un sistema entre todas, entre todos, eh, eh, más incluyente, más equitativo eh, para la alimentación. Entonces, hay la idea de una escuela de agroecología en construcción y la invitación es a que en este espacio podamos conocer las ideas generales que existen y cada quien le ponga lo que considere, lo que le signifique. Eh, en base a varios elementos eh, que respondan estas preguntas. ¿Es necesario? ¿Por qué? ¿Para qué una escuela de agroecología? ¿Quiénes estarían ahí? ¿Quiénes van a, se a enseñar? ¿Quiénes van a aprender? ¿Qué vamos a aprender y qué vamos a enseñar? ¿Qué vamos a intercambiar? ¿Qué vamos a construir? Y lo más importante, creo, ¿cuándo? ¿Cuándo vamos a hacerlo? Y porque hay compañeras, compañeros dentro del equipo, a unos nos gusta hablar mucho, a otros no tanto. Y la idea es cómo combinamos lo que decimos con lo que hacemos. Y lo que decimos con lo que hacemos, con lo que sentimos y con lo que sentimos. ¿Sí? Es buscar esa conexión eh, entre todos y todas y todes con nuestro ser y con la Pachamama, con la naturaleza. Y con la, la, la explicación que daba Molly, entonces eh, la idea es 
tuvimos una discusión en el colectivo de cómo trabajar este tema. Si presentamos un documento que lleva meses construyéndose, miren, aquí está esto, y lean, y revisen, y aporten, o invertimos el, el sentir, y más bien recuperamos de ustedes que van a ser la base de esta escuela, cómo quieren que sea esa escuela. Y que haya un proceso de retroalimentación que se ajuste a estas discusiones que ya han tenido y pueda haber otro momento de devolución. Eh, yo espero que no sea mucho tiempo y que signifique el arranque, el inicio de la escuela con un primer curso teórico, práctico, eh, reflexivo de la agroecología en Vermont. Entonces, dicho eso, eh, muchas gracias y paso a Molly otra vez. So what we are talking about here is not building something new. We have so much here and so many people that have been doing this work for a long, long time. What we're talking about is building relationships and building trust at the speed of trust and co-creating an opportunity to be inclusive and to build our power. This school, as we've envisioned it, with this leadership team that Freddie talked about, would be entirely grassroots. It would be a non-institutional space that is co-created by the people who would use it. It might be itinerant with multiple campuses across the region and this area to really lean into the strengths that we have and to help make this kind of opportunity available to more people. As Freddie said, it would combine agroecological technical training with political education and traditional knowledge. As we look to our friends at Iyalas across South and Central America, how they've been doing things with great success in their communities. What we're hoping to do this weekend is transition leadership slowly. It's going to take some time. But from this international group that's been supporting this idea based on their experience and bring that home and find local leaders here that want to help us build this process and move it forward in a way that works for here. Well, all the time, hoping that we can create a model that other communities will be interested in adapting and changing and making work for them so we can keep supporting each other and building this power. So we're hoping that you can help us because we don't really know what we, we're doing. We, ha we have a lot of ideas and we have a lot of experience to lean into, but we have not figured it all out and the idea is not for us to figure it all out at all. The idea is for this to be built from the ground up. And so we have some questions for you, and we're soliciting feedback and ideas and thoughts and concerns. And so we're hoping that you'll help us. And so we're planning on forming four groups, because that's how many translators that we have. So we can have these conversations together. And we have facilitators from members of the school, the current school leadership team to help that conversation. And so we're going to give you four questions to spend some time on. And you'll have about 15 <coughs> minutes per question as a group to provide some answers and thoughts and feedback or anything that's on your mind. And then at the end, we'll come back together and we'll ask the groups to share what they came up with and what those discussions were and how everyone is feeling about this. Does that sound good? Yeah. Preguntas? Sí. Questions? We couldn't have done that good of a job. They're ready. They're primed. Okay. Um, so, yes. Can we have people volunteer from different states to come over and help out and build on it? In your small groups right now? No, later. Later. 
I hope so, yes. Mm -hmm. So part of this idea is that we would be creating a network, right? And opportunities for exchange to keep learning from each other. Because if I have no other takeaways, it's that I have so much to learn from every single person here. And I'm so thankful for the opportunity to do so. And I'd like to create more of these opportunities. Because frankly, we plan too much on the agenda and there's not enough time to hang out. So if you're ready, we're hoping that folks can help us move some tables so there can be four quadrants and disperse yourselves fairly evenly amongst them. Do you have a question, Grace? Okay. Are there any other questions before we begin? And can we have the members of the PPC that are present, could you just raise your hand so folks can see who have been having these conversations? And not everyone is here. I know we're missing Ayla and at least a few more people. And Kali is also part of this group. Is he in the back? Yes. Tammy, mm -hmm. Tanama, Henry. So there's going to be Wavy. Where's Wavy? Raise your hand. Thank you, Wavy. Cool. Um, Los espacios, ¿dónde vamos a trabajar? Sí, in the tent. Uh, so do you think we'll all fit? I think we'll all fit. If we four set groups. up four tables, yes? And so you're going to have one translator per group, and there's going to be um, consecutive. Is that the right word? Translation. And so our translators are working so incredibly hard to help us all understand each other and be together. Um, and it's going to be a little bit of a process, but we'll get there in the end. Ready? Set. Yes. Go. Yay! So Henry is one of our facilitators, Wavy is a facilitator, Tammy is a facilitator, and Tana Ma is a facilitator. Um, I would like to add, no pressure, but the wonderful Nuestra Mesa BK kitchen team has offered to open up their space for two people to come make food with them and share political, social, revolutionary space with them. Uh, so if any two people want to go up there, please do. I, I forgot an important part. Hold on, hold on. So the question that we're hoping to answer here today is why an agroecology and movement building school in Vermont and what would it need to look like for it to serve the communities here? And so there's four questions that you're going to spend 15 minutes on each one. And the first one, you'll have these all written down, is why is this a good idea? The second one is why is this not a good idea? The third one is what would be needed in order to make this a reality? And the fourth one is what are any potential trade-offs or conflicts that may arise out of this process? <laughs> See, does that make sense? Yes. Y quiero hacer un anuncio bien rapidito. I just want to make a brief announcement as far as the interpretation devices. Eh, estamos uh, at capacity with some of the devices, so please just make sure you take care of yours. We're not going to need them for this session in particular, but just make sure you have them for the following sessions later on in the day. Thank you so much. Eh, solamente para asegurarnos que por favor cuide los aparatitos que tienen. No lo vamos a usar en esta sesión, pero ya para la siguiente a las 5 sí. Muchísimas gracias. Are people comfortable dividing into groups themselves, or would you like to count off? Right you can do it yourself, right? Come on. Yeah. Thank you. So, um, who here feels like they understand the exercise that we're about to undertake? Yeah? This is my dear friend Kat Buxton, and she's going to explain the exercise in brief really quickly for all of us. Okay, we are going to answer four questions, uh, and Henry knows what those are, so we didn't have to remember them. That's um, true. And we are going to do that slowly and patiently in two languages so that we give each other time to process. Yeah. Yeah, the two languages slow thing is a major asset. Cool. So those questions are, why is an agroecology school a good idea? Why is it a bad idea? <laughs> you know, separate questions. What are the needs? That was one of the questions before. Um, 
and why why in Vermont? Um, I think. But we'll just take them on one at one at a time. Um, I've got a logistical question. Uh, I don't know if around here there are. Uh, if everybody understands and is able to speak English, I guess if anyone isn't. Yeah, is anybody does it anybody not like speak the, English? Uh, everybody around the circle here is English speaker. Yeah. So should we do it monolingual English? Jesus, do you, do you feel comfortable? Jesus is on the ball. Which ball? I know, right? <laughs> Um, so, so we can be in English. Thank you. So what I would like to propose is that we approach this first question first in a go round, and when it comes to you first, you say your name and where you're from, your pronouns, and your organization if you want to, just to be supporting us getting to know each other a little bit. Um, so, Simon, would you like to start? Why not? Uh, I'm Simon. I'm from Union Paysan in Quebec. I use all the pronouns except it. And uh, do I have to answer that question already? Yeah. But, but let's keep it short. Let's just throw out an idea. Uh, it's a good idea because we need a school of agroecology, but this, this is a very short answer. Yeah, good. Bien hecho. <laughs> My name's Cyrus. I'm coming from California. I work with the Jericho Movement, a movement for political prisoners. Um, right now we're working on an international tribunal to charge the United States with genocide on black, brown, and indigenous people. I'd like to talk more if anyone has interest to talk about that more. Um, he, they, pronouns is fine. Um, and I believe that this is a good idea to have an agroecology school because um, I feel like there's a lot of talk in this country about permaculture and about different principles. And I think agroecology centers uh, indigenous and ancestral wisdom um, in a non-capitalist format. So that's my input. And forgive me, I'll be gone for like five minutes and come right back here in a second. Thank you. Please. Go right ahead. Oh, okay, okay. Um, hi, my name is Grace, she, her pronouns. Um, I'm a fellow um, at UVM this summer, and I think uh, building a school in Vermont in particular is a good idea because Vermont, I feel like, fosters this kind of conversation and um, is, like, pr provides a great space um, for this kind of education. And I'm Molly, I use she, her pronouns, and to me, an agroecology school is a, a very good idea because agroecology is quite well known internationally among civil society, but it's virtually unknown in the United States. It's a, a very unfamiliar concept. And here we are in the belly of the beast. This is the heart of industrial agriculture in the United States. So we desperately need to be creating and building awareness of what the alternatives are. Agroecology is the best alternative out there to the agroindustrial system. Is it my turn? Yes. Uh, I'm Grace also. I think there are three Graces here at least. I use she, her pronouns, and 
I work for NOFA Vermont. I live here in Vermont. I work for NOFA Vermont, which is the uh, Northeast Organic Farming Association of Vermont, and I live in Vermont. And I am really excited about the conversation, grateful to the organizers and all the folks who've traveled from so far to share your knowledge with us. And I'm holding the question about how we get Vermont farmers to see themselves as part of this. Hi, I'm Mindy. I use she, her pronouns. Um, I organize lots of people around the state um, around climate justice and land. Um, I think an agroecology school particularly like with La Via Campesina principles is a good idea in Vermont because we live in a place here that acts as climate refuge where there are people coming here to be here and it's a necessity to to organize around how to welcome people here and how to be on land here in different ways in this transition era. I think it's essential. I'm Kenya. I use they pronouns. I work with the Northeast Farmers of Color Land Trust on the Every Town Project. And I think it's a great idea because we're doing it wrong and we have to fix it so we can continue to survive on this planet. <laughs> My name's Ann Miller. I live just down the hill. And as far as I'm being with any organization, I'm totally disorganized. Um, I only ever heard the word agroecology about three days ago, so I don't know very much about it yet. But I think that we already have a climate in Vermont where people talk. A lot of the talk that's at least adjacent to what I've heard here. So there's already, I think, some familiarity with and some support for some of the concepts. Um, whether, and the reason maybe for having a school would be that there needs to be more practice of it. Okay. Hello, everybody. My name is Jesus. I use him, him pronouns. Representing Organización Boricua in Puerto Rico. And I think um, it is important because um, agroecology can be like a school like this and be a political home for everybody. And also, agroecology that can be like a lifestyle. It's not only about like producing food uh, and brings cohesion and communication to, to have a base, to have a, a group of people that are organized. My name is Megan. I use they, them pronouns. I am representing Northeast Kingdom Organizing as a community organizer. Um, I think this is a fantastic idea. I'm extremely excited about it. I farmed for 10 years, took care of a nuclear couple, and burned out. And I, I'm so invested in people building power together, and I think that is about giving land back to people. I'm excited to talk about it. My name is Isidoro, and I come from Texas. I represent the Farm Workers Association. And I think it is very important that you have the school here in order to be protecting the land and to protect the soils and to protect the food, healthy food for people. And most important is to have students, new youth people to come over and learn from what you can build over here in Vermont. So I think it is important that the schools can be open as soon as possible. Uh, my name is Ellen, I use the pronouns. Um, I am here with the Northwest Project, and that project is based in West Central Massachusetts. And I think that uh, agriculture school in Vermont um, can be very important if it is uh, connected with, like, like it becomes more of like a regional school and like connected with like other like, neighboring and outside Vermont, like the old teacher general and other fields. And particularly if it can uplift the agroecological uh, work that has already been happening in the area and seek to like form partnerships with people who are already doing this work and connect that.
Uh, my name is uh, Kamal. I'm um, originally from Brooklyn, but I live in Atlanta. Uh, with an organization called Community Media Builders that does grassroots organizing, grassroots participation, and police violence in black community. Uh, I think it could be a good idea. He him for now, so he said that. Uh, I think it would be a good idea because I think you have a high concentration here of people who are um, maybe open to a concept because of sort of folks who have lived here, with a radical background, progressive background. And so uniting those folks together under a common uh, work would be a good idea to say that. Uh, Nancy? She, her pronouns uh, from Vermont, and I think it's better than a great idea. I think it's necessary. Um, there are multiple systems failures, and there are solutions that we need to be building awareness out and learn and transition. My name is Kat. Um, she, her pronouns. I'm from Vermont. Um, I work with bugs and plants and soil and people. Um, and I think this is the most important thing that we could be doing um, to encourage large scale behavior change, system change, and get ready for the massive influx of people that are going to and are already coming to Vermont. Uh, my name is Amanda. I use she pronouns. Um, I think it's a necessary idea because. Uh, the bad ideas are a well-worn group, and um, they have a really loud megaphone and, and um, uh, perpetuate them, themselves really well. And so to derail it, train um, it, uh, getting together and amplifying the, the better practices, the better principles. Is, uh, yeah, the only way to like Build and fight. Cool. Oh, my name is Henry, and um, I essentially think this is a good idea. I agree with a lot of the strategic principles, but also I just am noticing that a lot of people are already there. That's that's why I'm here, is because this is what the people who are making sense in so many of the other areas of important work are all already saying. So giving them that that formal opportunity to work together in a in a bitter in a bigger social movement body using traditional ideas of education, organizing, and mobilization. Uh, I think we're as ready as we're gonna be. So yeah. It's the it's the undertaking I've been scared of for a really long time. <laughs> I'm sort of bummed that you and all your friends are here to give us all this work to do. <laughs> Thank you so much. Yeah. Cool. Uh, that was awesome. Um, does anybody... It's transition time now? Yeah. Does anybody have any sort of like thoughts to help kind of lend these ideas or... To, uh, yeah, some kind of conclusive thing that they'd like to contribute to this list. I don't think we'll have much to say in response to the second question of why this is not a good idea, <laughs> because it seems as if this group is pretty much in agreement that this is a necessary uh, way to build power, to build uh, knowledge, to build solidarity with other agroecology schools and a movement internationally. Yeah, I really, I'm glad you said the internationalism piece. I think you know, we're all thinking about climate. There's one sky and here in the heart of the Imperium, people talk about the United States, like, you know, and uh, really trying to Reimagine the planet Earth is a it's an amazing opportunity that Lavia is bringing to us. So yeah, I've got some uh, more thoughts. Uh, I don't know Vermont very well, but in my perspective, it's like in United States is the end of the world. Like it's so up north and. 
it seems like it it has been uh, saved from some of the agro business destruction. So if we want to create here a model of agroecology, it feels like that there is space for that. Like the, the, the environment is not that much destructed by agribusiness. So it's, it's less of a fight. Uh, like in comparison of doing that in uh, the Midwest or uh, in somewhere in the United States that is already all destroyed by agribusiness. So that, yeah. <laughs> Um, would you all like to maybe uh, take a little bit of... We got a Kenya. We got a Kenya? I don't think it's a bad idea, but I think if we're like, if we're like all for the school and this idea and these concepts, Vermont is a very white place and it's very easy to follow white leadership for everything that happens here. And I think that's obviously one of the main points is to not do that. But I think it's definitely something to be wary of in this white place. Um, I'm, not I don't, I'm not necessarily saying um, this is too much of a cause for concern, but one of the concerns I do have is um, placement and travel. Um, traveling to Vermont is very expensive um, because the Burlington Airport is just not a lot of people fly out of there, and so flights tend to be very expensive. And um, yeah, and if we're thinking of like strategically a place where people can easily get to, a place for international travel and to be able to invite our international um, partners, then. Um, you know, it's that can be a challenge um, financially, especially and like logistically for a lot of people. And thank you for using the word challenge. I think that this is this conversation is about the opportunities and the obstacles, right? The challenges, concerns, not why is it a bad idea, right? Uh, and I'll just say that that is one of the main reasons why we're trying to create a network. Uh, because, yeah, Vermont's only going to be able to be a little bit relevant. Yeah, like, I'm not, I mean, with that, I'm also thinking about, like, this is a great idea if we all, like, really get behind it. And if we don't, I don't know if it's a good idea. Like, that's where I feel personal hesitancy, and that's more around accountability. You know, where it's like, I keep wondering, like, what is what are we going to really commit to you know with like with a set of principles and then our like all find our own strategies and niches within that but like what can we actually commit to together and if this can be that or like 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 part of that i want to like i want to like be here you know and if it's not it's like I want to find that thing. Like I, I want to be involved in that, in that thing, um, and that can look a bunch of different ways. But, but what I notice is that everybody is extremely burned out. You know, like people are overworked and burned out. And so, if we're going to be starting another significant and meaningful project, we've got to be accountable to each other and like be fully in, not just like a toe in. You know, and so I feel like genuine hesitancy about like being fully in and let like unless if everybody is fully in, you know? Um yeah. Like what are you gonna draw? Yeah. yeah. Right. Like I, because our lives have to shift actually to like do this work and to make this happen. And so if we are going to commit to that and do that together, let's fucking do it. And if we're not going to it needs to be something it needs to be something else to be organizing around. Yeah. And we lose our circle process. So yeah, I was just kind of wondering the same thing. I really like the circle thing because then probably everybody's going to talk. 
going to be popcorn. Maybe some people aren't going to. Can, can we stick with the circle? Are people comfortable with that? Yeah, people pass. Yeah, people pass. Of course, no willing. Burn it out of you. Okay. Um, so we've seen. Why don't we just start going to the left of you? Okay. Welcome. <laughs> <laughs> okay, great. Well, Let's go to the right. The ball, right? Yeah. If we do it in circle we process, we skipped a bunch of people. <laughs> cool. I'm not following, but I think you guys know what you're doing. Yeah, we don't. Yeah, we don't yeah, yeah, I think that's for an actually kind of Okay, it sounds like you're going next, Chris. I'm I'm at uh, I haven't formed a thought yet. I'm I'm sharing similar questions, which is um, about how the process is emergent, and I feel like I'm I'm really in the listening place this weekend from a lot of the folks who are doing this work around the globe and trying to understand how it's worked where y'all have been doing this just understand before sort of trying to problematize it or champion like understanding how it works i still feel like i'm, I'm there um, and i think i'm doing some in my head of like oh everything that i want to organize around i'm like projecting onto this like it's this is everything this is like a political home and a, and a pol uh, uh, social movement and a lifestyle and farm food production and that's what's exciting about it but i'm also like that's what's complex about explaining it and pointing to it and getting people invested in it i think it's just big so i'm i'm still at the like seeking to understand exactly what this would look like and i think your questions about like who's involved in vermont in championing this idea and 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 a, and your point about like who's already doing this work in New England is work I'm it's, it's so new to me I don't know the answers to that and I want to, to learn the answers to that as like a part of this process well Simon raised a little bit earlier the point that um, Vermont is a good place to have an agroecology school because there are no major uh, agro industries here, agribusiness here. Um, but but that's also a reason why I'm not sure that that the rest of the country, that farmers in the rest of the country, would take an agroecology school from Vermont seriously. I mean, they don't think of Vermont as being a farm state at all. Vermont raises maple, and we have milk, uh, and and. What else? Um, it, it, it's just not a major agricultural state, which is one of the reasons why agroecology can slip in here. There won't be that much resistance, but will it be the kind of catalyst for agroecology to take over the rest of the country? If a place like Practical Farmers of Iowa, if they were to suddenly decide agroecology, that's our mission. I could imagine that being far more influential. Um, this is my first time here. It's really awesome seeing like all the people that's from Vermont that's been working with La Via and the, the relationships that are already formed here. Like, you know, like how you said, like it would be cool if Iowa got onto agroecology. But I feel like there's that those embers don't exist there as much, and so I'm looking at like you know Vermont's like got some embers going here and people that's you know build those relations, and I don't think that it's all like exclusive like because it, like you know me and my brother Jabril we're coming from California and we'd like to have an agroecology school out there too, but I don't feel like it's exclusive like if Vermont has it, other places can't have it you know. Um, so I'm not sure. I, I trust the relationships and the leadership of La Via as an international organization. I don't have as much input on why Vermont's not a good idea, unless it excludes other places. So if there's a context where a school in Vermont excludes other places, then I would say yes, it's not a good idea. But I don't see that as a reality. I just got the five-minute warning, so let's just pick up the pace a little bit. Go ahead. Yeah, um, <laughs> Well, I'm taking this idea of Molly and continuing my idea of like 
Vermont being safe from agribusiness, maybe it's not the place in the United States that needs uh, agroecology school the most. So uh, maybe people in California need it most, or people in Florida. I don't know. But uh, yeah, it, it's a great question. But also, it's it's not coming from the top. Like it's not La Via Campesina that decide to do it here. It's the people in Vermont that gather and build that process. So we need people elsewhere if if we if we want to do a agroecology school in California. We need people in California to start that process so it's not us to decide if it's a good idea or no We're like people here want to do it so they yeah they they will or they will not but it's got it maybe some other place need it need it more but they might not have the capacity or the ability to do that the reason why it might not be a good idea, um, it's mostly just fear. Uh, haste, I worry about the pace at which people move uh, and the results that we get from that sort of haste generally lead us where we don't want to be. So I worry about rushing into anything. Um, I think a very slow, intentional pace um, making sure that we're building that social mycelium, connecting all along the way and moving slowly and building relationships is the very best thing we can do. And I, that's something I could be in, but I also worry like, what's going to bump? You know, um, I would have a, a much greater time um, participating and uh, organizing participation if I knew it was going to be a very slow, intentional relationship building process. First, never mind a school. Um, I was going to say something similar. I think the whiteness of Vermont is what makes it a bad idea, per se, or could be a bad idea. Uh, the fact that it's uh, folks of color, black folks, most, there's probably hardly any black farmers concentrated here as opposed to other places in the country. Um, eight. Eight. Yeah. So the, that would be disturbing. The fact that climate change impacts folks of color, black folks, in a way it doesn't um, white folks, in terms of the first folks to get it in terms of environmental racism and so forth. So the fact that that's not sort of a consideration of the where a school should go, um, I, think it's a, I think of it as a negative. Yeah. Um, I first of all I definitely appreciate the opportunity for like this kind of community feedback. I think it's really important. And definitely feedback that I have and like a uh, challenge or like a reason why I think this might be not. I don't want to say it's not great because I think it's a great idea, but what I'm worried about is the ways in which a, that starting an agroecology school here um, might eclipse the agroecological work that has already been happening here. Um, if that work goes unacknowledged, and like that feels like. Like, I'm naming that because it feels like something that is happening already. Like, I, this is the work that I'm doing. I'm connecting with folks, particularly indigenous folks from this region, from the like, Northeast in general, who have been um, doing agroecological work and involved in the agroecological process for the last few years and who weren't brought into the process of starting an agroecological school in this region. And um, like, despite having like shown up to encounters before and having like forming the just like weren't invited here and like we kind of like found our way here anyway. To now like deliver this feedback of like it is important I think for this this thing to start and I think it's important again like I said to, like have have it happen in relationship and consultation and like straight up collaboration with the work that has been happening. I like think about um a collective called. EWR, Eastern Woodlands Renatration Collective, which includes folks like for, like all across um, the Northeast, like Penobscot folks in Maine, Nipmuc in Western Mass, Mashpee, uh, and Wampanoag, and like Rhode Island, and, like, and uh, Eastern Mass, who have been involved in an agroecological process and have been doing agroecological work and have, have been showing up to encounters and like doing, doing this work and relationship building and doing like um, these, these processes. 
and yet, like, weren't formally invited into this space to like, collaborate um, in the school. And yeah, I guess that's a fear of mine, that, and it's a fear that's like being expressed like with the folks that I work with. Um, that an agricultural school that doesn't consult with like and like collaborate directly with those folks, like, will actually like, leave people out of that process to the point that like people are I'm connected to like in these like in these communities. Tribal communities have named that like I'm gonna stop showing up to these individuals because like we're less you at the table. And so that's like a serious concern I think uh, that I think that moving forward is like a thing that can't continue to be, to be dropped. And there are folks in this space right now who are like I guess that we've come for like give this feedback and hopefully like less people can like continue like collaborate and speak with organizers to like we're, we're, we're running out of time. Time. I think uh, it's all about getting connections and get uh, get a lot of people engaging and to get volunteers, you know, from the community here in order to get uh, this place to grow up there. So uh, it's going to be a challenge, but I think it, it's not going to be impossible. Yeah. I think one of the challenges that will be faced if this continues is the idea that we're still selling people on, on like white, monogamous, nuclear, couple farming, and that a boutique farm market will sustain you. You get on land, you have a good business plan, and you will make money in this like all out economy around feeding really wealthy people. It kind of really tiny. I say this all the time because we don't talk about. Like yeah. two-inch cucumbers, and so I think we are—we're telling a story around what it looks like to be a successful farmer um, and use land or have a relationship on land that will eventually be for you and your small family. And I think um, that is the best I would say why is it a good idea or a bad idea because I'm not from here, but what can I say? Oh, okay. According to our analysis, like at our country and at the global level, and also like some of the workshops that we had yesterday and today, like I think it's urgent uh, to have to try out things and uh, and, uh, and have schools that represent us um, and see if it works or not. I think the benefit that I can add is that it, this process is being accompanied by other experiences that have had their challenges and that are still in that process and uh, so there's kind of that accompaniment but definitely needs to be led by the people on the ground and I know Vermont has certain character characteristics that we're learning here the people that were not from here um, so yeah it's, I think it's more a debate of the people that live here uh, and I think yeah we can do schools anywhere but we are here right and there's people here interested uh, and there has been like a lot of care put, put to this process so I'm, a, I'm up for like trying out things um, yeah, that's what I, I guess my thoughts would echo a lot of the thoughts that I've heard um, mostly around who is teaching who is involved in the process who is deciding how to reach out to people who to reach out to for instance I I might have something to contribute to but I it's only a total coincidence that I'm here today because nobody asked me um, until I came up here to look at him and corn um, and I noticed that there are no there are very few people local Vermont farmers here um, and that's not necessary. That might be a reason to have a school, but I think we do have to be very careful about who we imagine our community is. Um, and I, I, I think there's some obstacle, and maybe those are some, I forgot the other questions, but some potential obstacles here, in my experience here, People like to talk a lot more than they like to do. And, and there's a very 
people talk about community, but they generally don't really like the idea of a work for big here. I'm a frustrated communal farmer because I live in Vermont, and I try to get work brigades together, and people just like, why should I come help you? And I'm like, well, because I'll come help you. And they're like, well, why? I have my husband. Work. It's like, it's, it's a little bit of a foreign yeah. feel or concept. And again, that might be a reason to do it. Well, my contribution will just be, I think that speaks a lot to what Grace and Mindy said about like, well, is this the thing? Is this the movement context over like having, you know, just one aspect of like, are we going to grow some vegetables or have a lifestyle or have a revolutionary economy and things like that? And I just think uh, we are the ones that we've been waiting for is always true, right? If the time is getting late and we've got to have a movement, here's this like international movement that showed up in the yard and it's like, hey, let's roll. The Cubans started their revolution with mass education, um, the propaganda phase, and moved into replacing this, the economy with another economy. You know, so this is an opportunity, and it'll probably fail, and we'll have to reconvene and try again. So let's go ahead and, and run some plays and give it a, give it a shot. Is sort of the good work theory. Um, so let's move on into. Um, we're gonna instead of going to needs, we're gonna end up with needs because let's. Um, and some of those were already discussed, but let's go ahead and hit up what are potential trade-offs or conflicts. Thank you, because um, it's sort of now we can end on a high note. So potential trade-offs or conflicts. Now I'm not exactly sure I understand this question. <laughs> what are potential trade-offs or conflicts? Do you feel like you can speak to that? Um, yeah, um, so one thing I've noticed is that like people love the idea of creating something new, but I feel like that's not always necessary. I think it's important to think about what already exists and to build on top of it or to join. Like, should we start something new and to have a new name, a new organization, a new institution or whatever, creation? Or can we like put that sort of ego aside and join something existent and build on top of something that already exists? Um, and yeah, that's, yeah. I, w I would just like to, like in a, an another editorial note, if you'll indulge me, I hope that in this critical thinking session that we're having, that instead of engaging in rhetorical, uh, potentially critical ideas, that we're a little bit familiar with the specific thing that we're talking about, and that we share what we actually think is going to be a problem as opposed to trying to come up with, not that you were just doing that or anybody else was just doing that, but like, you know, let's talk about the things that we actually can taste and see right in front of us, right? Go ahead. Um, yeah, what, what you brought up seems to be like the major concern. Like, you know, me coming into this space, I don't know what's been going on, I'm not from out here. But I think to me that that's like the primary concern that's been raised in my book is just like, how are people that's engaging in agroecology already being like, why aren't they here? You know, was that a, was that a result of negligence? Was that a result of intention? And particularly indigenous communities, you know, like agroecology and La Via Compassina is so tied to that. And that's like a pivotal aspect. So that's to me like a trade-off or a conflict that cannot be ignored um, in building an agroecology space here. And I think a lot of us would agree with that. Uh, I think that we need a little bit of context about what's going on in North America with uh, La Via Campesina right now. Like, uh, there's supposed to be a political committee that organize and that uh, lead the movement. And right now it's not working for almost two years and probably more than that. Like, there are no leadership right now except of the youth articulation and women articulation and some uh, different space of discussion. So, uh, we, in the North American region, 
there's there have not been any. So I'm sorry, I just got the signal, and we're not going to even have time to have our fourth question at all. Yeah. And um, as someone who's going to keep on working on this really hard, I really want to know what you guys think we need to get started. You know, with it being a given that we were going to start it. Okay. So I would especially like to hear from folks who have been involved in trying to stand up this kind of thing, or and and folks of color, or folks who feel like they represent a less available voice in this kind of conversation. Um, so please take it if you feel it. What do we need for an agroecology school in Vermont? Thank you, gentlemen. Well, that, that's leadership. something I, <laughs> I, I was heading for that. Like, wait a second. Hang on. Uh, we've just opened up a space for less, for voices of people who have, we have less access to be able to hear from. So I just, I just want to. I want to try and keep that going. I want to uplift what Kenya said and like just like reiterate that like I think what needs to happen is reach, like specifically reaching out to indigenous groups in this area that have been doing the work of agriculture. <coughs> some of us who can't, I work with folks, I'm not indigenous in this area, but some of us some, came here um, to assert that. And I think, yeah, we'd love to like talk with folks in the like organizing like, to form those connections to avoid that conflict which is here already and have a good collaboration. Cool. Also to lift up what you said earlier about the regional, like the regional aspect of that, I think particularly here, that's like that's so important, and and within like indigenous relationships, like regional, regional aspect. I see uh, organizational conflicts as being an issue. We have a lot more organizations in the state of Vermont working on all the issues uh, than probably any other state, and I worry about the egos of these organizations being a conflict for a grassroots movement. Can you turn that into a need that um, have to get started? Build the social mycelium without ego. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know if it's possible. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's very connected to the last two books. You know, I think speed and transparency, you know, slowness and transparency of process and intentional invitation or connection would be a, a next step. And maybe a restorative justice pro process or a, something is a step that could be taken. Can I suggest a livable basic income for the leadership? Um, and not ask for more extractiveness in a capitalist economy? Thank you. Keep it coming. This is great. Um, regular interaction with groups like Safon that are working with black farmers because Vermont is one of the whitest states and we really need to be reaching out to people of color working with them closely. I agree with that and I also would want to add that we don't need to look so far afield. There are Yes, Vermont is super white and the Northeast in general is super white, and there are black farmers and there are indigenous farmers and there are migrant farmers in the area. So yes, reaching out and also looking close to homes for that's those communities. And there are groups like NEFOC, of course, yes. who are right here, exactly. who are all in the SUSU Collaborative, who are working with <coughs> black farmers. But I, I do think it would be important to have a network with other groups of color. I think an additional need to... make land available and affordable for people. So that would be a good thing. Yeah, I echo that, like, using the connections here to leverage and get land back and uh, reparations for people. That could be a, a valuable space for agroecology and university to operate, train people, and then provide land, like be able to give land so people can actually have ownership and equity. Uh, we're still going. 
collaborate with Everytown and the Relief Network. That summarizes all those other points. <laughs> that is a nice, specific need. I mean, can I answer that? Yes. Collaborate with Eastern Blue and And the Blumazine Land Trust. And there's so many other groups that are doing this work. Every town. Um, I'll just say that, uh, and this isn't trying to write myself a blank check, but never expect underhandedness when incompetence will do. <laughs> Right? Nobody, there's never been a discussion I've been privy to of anybody being excluded from shit. And I've been to so many of these conferences where after all the planning happened, then everybody comes with, uh, with the good ideas, and, but their hands weren't involved in implementing them, right? So this is, an admo is not an admonishment, but we, we all know what this is like, right? We could do, this could have been such a comprehensive, universal, most amazing, nah, 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 you know, but most of us just came for dinner, and, that, and that'll be me when I come to y'all's conferences with, with uh, two suggestions, right? So, um, so, and I know you all know this, but I think that just, just we're, you know, trying to, trying to make family together, and it's a process. It's all right. I have so many comments. Yeah. <laughs> I try to make it obvious. <laughs> uh, any other needs that y'all feel like? I feel like there's like, I mean, the land thing, right? We need, we have to get engaged in more land. Yeah, please. And, and it's related to the land thing. We, we need a very strong connection with policy. Uh, an agroecology school should not just be about practice and political consciousness raising. It needs to be connected in with political process and how folks can actually implement some of these changes that need to be made, like making land more affordable. Well, it's interesting like every landowner in we, I wonder what it looks like if every landowner in this particular conversation tent gives land, mm. just gives away land. And how many people at this at this conversation right now could leave here and say, I will give my land away, whatever, whatever I feel like I can do. And like, could we just... Sorry, even just the pen right there, but... Yeah, good old hand bone. Yeah. I did give some land away. Yeah. It's true. Yeah. At this place. Um, I would just like to, following on Molly's point, I think, you know, we talk about agroecology and shit, we talk about policy. Um, one of the things, so the only other time before I became a member of World Month I ever worked with La Via Campesina, we shut down Cancun for the World Trade Organization. Right? We had a major mobilization. It was a huge educational uh, moment for a lot of people, and it had a lot of influence on policy globally because we beat the Doha Accords, right? The, the globalization, privatization of food policy in 135 member countries. La Via is here telling us that they hope to return to grassroots organizing and direct action as a major mode of influence, which I think when we talk about policy and influencing society in a lot of these circles in the United States, we're often talking about um, advocacy, right? But it's, advocacy is not the sole uh, orientation. Another thing that was said earlier was that, um, you know, what kind of work can we build on? A lot of folks were saying that. There's all so much amazing work to build on, and I am not aware that there is the base building proposal functioning anywhere in the United States. You know, what is it the is it the Democratic Socialists of America that are building the movement, right? So just to remember, like, oh, do we even need this at all? I would say, God damn it, yes. If this is the movement entity or a movement entity that we all might be terrified it is, then yes, absolutely. We do not have that. We do not have even the minuscule 
movement entity that we had when I was coming up 20 years ago, which was just barely really a social movement. So I feel like that social movement identity and education about what makes a social movement is, is something that's really necessary, and it's why we've invited folks like Megan and Northeast Kingdom organizing and folks from, you know, grassroots movements who you wouldn't think, oh, agroecology, right? But we really need to integrate that into our work uh, because we have a defensive strategy instead of an offensive one. And we need an offensive one, sort of to the tune of what Kali was and others were talking about earlier. I won't indulge myself any further there. Uh, I think we're about to get reassembled. And where is our friend Cyrus who's going to report back? He just raced off up the hill. <laughs> oh my god. They infiltrated us. There's so many more needs. Yeah, you want to rattle some up? <laughs> Cross uh -huh. class leadership. Cross class leadership. Cross class leadership. Fuck yeah, it's a big deal. Right, or like not and like building on that like nine non hierarchical mechanisms within that and like the stra like strategies and freedom and flexibility for people to have their own different niches within that. So it can't really just be one size fits all and like on the policy piece like I want to shift that language actually to like strategic pinpointed systems change work and so it's like it's not advocacy in the policy world it's like strategic pinpointed change to enable the the parallel systems that we're trying to create. Can you explain what sorry, can you explain what you mean by cross class Yeah, so that it's not just like rich people Right. We're just poor people, right? Like, right. Yeah. Well, yeah, nobody wants that, but like that's who usually starts these things as like someone who has the time and energy to do that. Yeah. I think there's a lot of relationship building to do there too, and cross class discussions. There's a lot of, uh, yeah. And it's also a tendency when things are done online that you can only contact people you already know. Um, a concern I have, and I don't know how to phrase this into a need, but I am deeply concerned about the limited amount of black and brown people in our state that are doing leadership work already and are maxed out. <laughs> and we need black and brown leadership in this space, right? So that's, uh, that's an issue. Well, one way that we hope to address that is the consulta process not convening folks to our table but going to theirs and we will be undertaking that for now and we're excited to get invitations and we will be reaching out to eastern women's we've i mean they're here and not because we didn't invite them yeah yeah we invited them didn't invite them kristen Kristen's here, but not not like as efficient as we should we should talk about it. Cool. Yeah, folks are here. Yeah. 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 I mean, I think you just like that game made me dizzy. The zoomification of the movement has really fucking hurt us. My God. Yeah. So that's a whole just effective consistent communication channel. So that's all the nice. That's Thank you. a lot happening, but you don't know it. So what's that? How do you Can I ask one more question yeah. since we've got it for a second? So with it being assumed that this is an an institution, I think there's a lot of people who would not be here if we were talking about having a school, but we're really trying to like fledge out a movement. What would what would you imagine needing to be able to participate in a totally robust and committed way? Somebody said a livable wage for the leadership, you know? I think reciprocity. I thought you said access to abortion, and I was like, also. Something you were getting at, but just uh, Henry, but like the idea of like, it's not just like encouraging folks to come all the way up here again and again, but then showing up to the TikTok, like anything. Because that, that's a big ask, is for folks to show up to the thing, and contribute to a thing, even consult on a thing. But that reciprocity, like, cool, then what is like the agriculture school 
you know, how is how is that showing up to the other thing? So, like, so it's not just like a one way, yeah. Like, give and contribute to this important thing. This is important, but like that reciprocity, like, and we will show up to, to that. Your thing, and we will show up to that. Thing. Yeah. What's that? I mean, there's reciprocity and there's solidarity. Mm. They're different things. Mm. Can you say more about that? Um, there is not quid pro solidarity is explicitly not quid right, pro quo. For sure, it's not transactional. But reciprocity is important too. Yeah. Yeah, I just go back to like land access specifically. Like, you know, like a lot of projects is like, yeah, come on, we'll teach you, and you can work here. Yeah. But there's no ownership and there's no stake, and that's what a lot of land workers we all experience. So that shift in ownership is vital. Nobody gets to work in what they went to school for. Right. right. So I'm thinking great. about uh, alliances and other people who need to be involved. Mm -hmm. uh, universal health care. Mm -hmm. Some of those folks are in and out of this space this weekend. Mm -hmm. But yeah. <laughs> One thing, that we, one thing that we didn't do this weekend that was on the list was to try to do a mapping project together and there just wasn't enough time to really try to understand who is doing the work and what are they doing and who knows them and what do they need to participate. But, you know, we just, we're just not even at the 101 in terms of the amount of stuff that we can cover with each other. Well, I, that raises the question to me, like, do we want to do a network, networking analysis project before we start talking about committing to a school? Like, a school to me feels like we know what the outcome will be, it will be a school. Whereas, like, movement building, to me, and maybe it's helpful to have a tangible project that we're working on, but maybe it's, like, movement building feels like something else might come up as the idea instead of a school. I know it might look different, but so that's just like a question I have. I feel like leading with the idea of a school, even if you say it's a decentralized school, it's like the, the notion is already formed. And if you, I don't know, that's just a question. Again, I don't think anybody's proposing that this is a be idea. And let's not imagine things to be any kind of mutually exclusive. You know, this is, uh, I think, a really strong, especially Latin American theory that you start the revolutionary work with education. That's not this or that kind of education. It's, this is just a, it's an empty vessel at this point, right? But yeah. So maybe I'm just proposing a strategy for the network building that I'm hearing people say is so critical of saying we're doing agroecological movement building work and we want you to be a part of it. For me, that, that might just be bring people in. I could be wrong about that. But I think enough. Hopefully it would bring people it would bring people in instead of turning them off. And then maybe a question needs to be um, what would it take to have you be a part of this? Yeah. Um, or what are you already invite people yeah. to do something? Or what are you a part of already that feels like it is that sense of movement that we could support? Right. Mm -hmm. I think both are really important. Yeah, there we are. I mean, to your point, yeah, I think like an ideal to me in this moment, an ideal like agroecological school like, is one that's like, how can we support the agroecological work that's happening? Not like being, not being like, this is what agroecology is, I'm going to do this. Which is not what I hear what the intention is. It's very much being like, how can we, like, I mean, that's how, like, almost, like you know, any kind of, like, like, democratic institution should work, right? It's like, this is, like, for, how can we support and, like, sharpen and hone the things that you are into doing, uh, as, you know, from a math perspective, not, like, being some kind of, like, vanguard, this is what it is, everyone should do this. Um, and, again, that's not what I'm hearing. Think about how you want to... Cyrus is back. Let's think about how our group would like to report back. We have 
these notes are we just gonna what will will happen if we adjust the report back just these notes like this is it'll be integrated into a larger document with everybody else's and that will go before the political pedagogical coordination which is the agroecology school collective to decide uh, which of these things will be integrated into the strategy mission action structure different elements right um, so but we could refine it more also if we wanted to you want to do a quick read through do we have time for that do you want to do a quick read through for all of us I guess the one thing I'm thinking is like in terms of redundancy, like if other groups share before us and they say similar things, do we want to just kind of edit those out no, and we, provide new? No, what? we really want to. That's going to be really strong for the people who are processing the information. Okay. Should we hear multiple so times? Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay, cool. That's good. I might not. I might edit it out. So. Right. Right. Yeah, I'll actually make sure the team reminds folks of that. Yeah, for sure. Y'all want to just wrap and get a breath? Yeah, let's just take a breath. Thanks so much. I really appreciate those of you bringing the challenge and the what the fucks. All right? Um, and those of you bringing the, like, love and the we can do this. Also welcome. Um, and, yeah, thanks a lot. And thanks for reporting. Yeah, I would also like to say, like... I'm not sure, but for me, it might have been helpful to hear some of what you felt like, you know, or what y'all been already working on. That could help, like, inform this process better in some ways. You know where the yeah. costume boxes? The costume boxes? <laughs> yeah, they're in the kind of living room. Like, <laughs> 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 the table in the living room. Did you have a specific question? Well, just as a note, like, you know, like in general, we're all contributing, and you have more, and you have more information we've been working on, this, so it would be helpful for me and for many of us probably to understand what you've been already working on, what y'all been doing, so inform to answer that. That was why Molly and Freddie gave the whole pitch. Okay. That was supposed to be that dose of okay. where do we start, okay. and we were going to write that down the document that they drew that for everybody, all these groups to look at. Okay. But we didn't want y'all's feedback on our document, or some of us didn't. We wanted to just hear what you had to say, or some of us did. Uh, so that's what we did like that. But um, yeah, we're still just really open. We're still just like, we think that there's a lot of great stuff that we could support each other to do education around and having this connection with La Via folks from way outside of Vermont to come and be some of the educators is a wild fucking opportunity. And largely because of what Kat was just bringing up about like this white state, we, you know, there's a lot, there's the, the folks of color leaders that I know are having their doors banged down and are used as excuses to not do all kinds of work because we want each of our groups to be catered to by them and we want everybody, we want a custom version of the leadership for each of our little conversations instead of just listening a little harder and doing what we're being asked, right? So that's the other side of the coin, right? Yeah. Uh, I mean that right there's actually like a really really finite there's only half a million people in the state of Vermont anyway. there's only so many of those that are activists at all and then there's so many of those that are people of color leaders and then so many of those who have any time for fuck all else besides what they're already holding down and so when every single white group gets radicalized last week by George Floyd and says we're not allowed to do anything ever again without black and brown people coming and sitting and holding our hands and nothing's ever going to happen and they're going to burn those black and brown leaders out ever faster because a lot of that responsibility and bullshit it gets internalized and I, I don't want to talk about this in front of some of my friends because it's like the hair is going to catch on fire you know? so yeah anyway sound familiar yes yeah. Before you, somebody over here, you raise your hand. Yeah, no, I, Thank I was you. I was going to say that um, 
here, like the document that was drafted before, like from folks from Vermont and some international allies, um, encompasses some of the stuff that was discussed here, but I think it was very enriched, especially with the second question, with the challenge. Yep. And, uh, and I'll bring some things, uh, there's um, the way that, that normally these schools run, there's like this political and pedagogical coordination, which is just like uh, the coordination team. Um, in order for it to, to, to be successful, it needs to be representative of the people on the ground. So that thing that like we don't need to look so far away, like the northeastern region, that's like the, the essence. And then there's this international maybe group or committee that can help, you know, with experiences, curriculum, you know, but not recipes. Like, you know, let's talk about context. But it is crucial for it to be representative of, and that will take the time that it needs to take, include like BIPOC folks, you know, um, so yeah. And I think maybe we can change that once all of this is into that document, it can be shared with the participants that are interested via email or whatever. Yeah, yeah I mean, there are some of our oldest, dearest friends who are farming, who have been invited to this shift for months, are not here. They just can't be here. Right? This, I think, I mean, not again to make excuses, but y'all should really look at this gathering as ad hoc as fuck. Right? We're really hoping to get to work with uh, No Food Vermont this winter and put together some opportunities to bring this process to a place where there's already going to be a bunch of farmers to get that feedback because they ain't making it here on July 22nd. They're not fucking coming, you know? They're not in these parts. Less summer gathering, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah, but I mean, in a summer gathering, the food is cheap and plentiful, and we can hang it outside. We don't have the money to rent out the institution where we can have the dorms and the bullshit, right? We're in the yard. You know what I mean? So this is a step. It's not the first step. It's not the step. This is a step we're taking, and the school itself should be seen as the same. It's an effort, and if it resonates with people and there's alignment, it'll be more robust. And if it's less robust, that's appropriate too. And it'll be part of supporting the work that's going on, right? So, ready? It's getting good, uh, getting ready for your four bags. Let's take a break at least. Hi, everybody! I would like to ask you if you're willing to raise one of your pointer fingers like this. And you can wave it around in a circle like this. Okay, keep going. Okay. Uh, knock, knock. Yeah. Yeah. We're having a good time. Okay. So, um, here we are in a tent in the field. And we're about to hear back from all of you um, I don't know if you guys, you folks came up with like specific kinds of processes that you would like to report back in. Um, who from, who's going to take notes as we hear from this uh, very first step in a long consultation process with our communities? You're going to take the notes? Yes, thank you. Um, okay, and does someone feel like they are called to come before us and present us with their with what they'd like to share first. I do. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Yes. So, what would be can you hold this one? Yes. Maybe? What would be needed for an agroecology school in Vermont? We pulled out sort of two large ideas. One is infrastructure, both physical location as well as organizational infrastructure, like a budget, a staff, a curriculum. And the other main point was support, holistic support for the students of the school, both inside the school and outside the school. Um, which would rest on a foundation of strong relationships. Sweet the on. end. Wow. 
Are we are we doing a whole group at a time? We were told that we divided our group into one okay, person per sheet, part. and we're just gonna take a couple seconds per sheet to summarize versus read everything. Great. So let's go with this. Should we just do needs all the way through? I think it's gonna be a little faster if we do everything. So with the rest of your the people in your group, please join you and we can go through each section. Okay. Grace has one question for Okay, you were right. We're gonna just do needs first. This is your document. Thank you. Yeah. Oh yeah. Don't you want it? Yes. <laughs> yeah, step up and step lively. So is there, is there a needs presentation for the... Can we, I'm oh, sorry, time. What is, what are, what are we doing? Uh, ¿Qué hacemos? ¿Solo una pregunta cada grupo? O en each question, cada, cada pregunta, y seguimos así. It's 425, we're over our time already, and so we talked about, we want to give everyone a break. We know that you've been sitting and doing this work for a long time. And then we still have one more workshop, but I think it's going to get a little bit more condensed. Um, but we also reworked that in a way that we think we can still share everything that we wanted to with you all. Um, so if we could, then, yeah. I don't know, with time, we can, these are sticky. We can post them up and have people look at them at their leisure as well. Yeah. Um, I don't know if we post them up and they might fly away. But the you could, you could. Oh, okay. 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 What do we what do we think about just as the group models? We got needs from one group, we're gonna get challenges from another group, opportunities for another group, and potential conflicts and trade-offs from yet another group. But everything will be recorded for our process for sure, and everything will be posted in the barn for everyone to benefit from each other's feedback. Okay. Does that work for folks? Yeah. Okay, sorry for the abbreviated process and thank you so much. L. Are you next? Is that why you have this document? Oh, the same group. Uh, who is the next group? Let's hear. Um, let's hear the challenges or uh, what was the thing? Why? Why to not do it in Vermont? From this group at the picnic table. Bring your why not. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> So, yeah, we had a great discussion. Um, so some of the ideas was, one of the big ones that came out is, Vermont is 98% white. Um, so that was a big one in terms of um, having access, thinking about role models or leadership in the community if we're trying to bring BIPOC youth, um, BIPOC students to Vermont. Um, could be difficult to feel safe or supported here if there isn't that kind of um, community leadership. Um, there were folks sharing from who are in the agriculture program at UVM that it's a very similar extension there in Burlington um, with white folks leading discussion on race and gender. Um, thinking about migration, um, that it can't only be in Vermont, it needs to be moving. Um, Vermont can be isolating. So that was another one that came up for us. Um, language barrier, thinking about our international comrades who might want to do an exchange at the school in Vermont. Is that possible? Does it make sense? Um, Vermont is very liberal. So this was on both good and bad. Um, it can be bad in the sense it could be co-opted. The school, the movement, there's threat of co-optation. Um, also, another big one for this space is inaccessibility in terms of physically getting here. Um, there's no public transportation. Um, it's off the dirt road. So again, some of these things live in the good and bad part of it. Um, yeah, it seems like there wasn't a whole lot of context for some of the participants. So I think that was um, some, of, some of that on us as the organizers. So giving context for what the process has been, um, why is it here? Um, those kinds of ideas, and I 
think that was mostly it from our group. Was there anyone else from our group that Come wanted to on, add anything? There's a lot more reasons why not. <laughs> Anyone else? No platinum. No platinum. No <laughs> All right. All right. That indigenous people meeting came up in our group too. So yeah. I... So thinking about the indigenous people in the community came up. Um, I think that was. Go ahead, Martha. I was gonna say, um, one of the observations was that it should be anywhere. That this could be something that. Everywhere. Yeah. Yep. We're on the same page about that. Yep. Okay, that was it. Cool. Ricky, thank you. Uh, let's hear about the conflicts and trade offs from any group who wants to present their conflicts and trade offs. Come on. Conflicts, trade offs. I don't know where, I can't see which groups are which. Is there someone over here who hasn't presented yet? Is there a group? Y'all did present. Everybody did? Did some, did, is there a group over here? It's hard to tell. We have number one. The first question, that's the one we're doing. Why is it needed? Oh, okay. Uh, only one question. Okay, I want to do that one last. Somebody give me their conflicts and trade offs. Us, yes, that's a great idea. Cyrus. <laughs> <laughs> we only had two things. We didn't really go over that. So. Oh, mercy. Oh, good. We, we, we skipped it. <laughs> we could go with some not good ideas again. I think, uh, I think that one, one thing that came up for us in terms of a trade-off is that, like, towards the end, there was a discussion a little bit around um, that you know, there because of the, the demographics of this county in this area being primarily white, there is that trade-off. However, it also is operating as a regional space that's gonna function to help serve the community that is living here. Um, so I think that was one uh, trade-off that we did touch on towards the end. Um, you got any other ones? Yeah, I mean, there's also kind of that discussion about how like, is this the place to start? Or is there a process about, if we're gonna consult people about the school, which we will, why don't we just start about like, well, what is it that we should do? And, you know, there was a lot of an prospective answers to that question of the school being a more empty vessel than, you know, maybe more of a movement entity. Uh, but yeah, that maybe uh, that tra we're trading off the opportunity to do other things if we go with a school, but then again, nothing needs to be mutually exclusive. Yeah, I think that's another thing is that like, the asking the question of like, is it exclusive? Like, if there is an agroecology school here, does that exclude other communities, you know? Um, and trying to understand what that trade-off, if that exists or not, you know? Hopefully the rising tide lifts all boats. Anybody else want to talk to conflicts and trade-offs for a second? We had a much more robust why not to do the school here conversation. Okay, uh, Tammy, tell us how it is. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> also, uh, there's more freedom here that versus some other places. Uh, and there's a culture of engaged community, um, talking about people taking seriously local control, community game, that kind of thing. Um, the arable resources or the uh, um, things we need to uh, grow and, and source food are available here. Um, might be really good uh, considering the crises that are going on 
uh, considering some of the transitions from the other sectors, I think that's been mentioned before. Um, also, there's a need. The need in North America, uh, we need to replace the knowledge that's uh, been taken from us. Uh, we need the technical and political training. Uh, it does not exist elsewhere. Um, and then finally, so far it's been a good, healthy start in Vermont. Uh, it's been a uh, process that's been rooted in the movement and through sovereignty. Um, and there's uh, an existing relationship uh, within Vermont and within the community. Thank you. I'm just going to go out on a limb and see if anybody from the Agroecology School Collective would like to wrap up uh, this session uh, and uh, talk about what's going to happen next. So you could respond a little bit and or uh, just take us home. I know you're gonna do it. I know you know who you are. Oh, good. Well, Freddie, do you want to say anything to this group? No. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, then I. I okay, and I just want to. The reason I called on Freddie is because Freddie actually framed the first huge block of categories of questions before the Agroecology School Collective and has been our guide and mentor through the process uh, amongst many. And uh, yeah, I just really have appreciated the process a great deal. Um, thank you, Molly. Thank you so much, everybody. Bueno. Um, Yo quisiera comentar algunas cosas generales. Eh, primero agradecer eh, la participación del grupo que estuve acá con eh, Sammy y Joan y la participación de todas las personas que estuvieron ahí. Y escuchaba algunas inquietudes que creo son comunes en la mayoría de grupos. Y con mi intérprete que me estuvo apoyando, uh, hacíamos diálogos también entre la interpretación y uno de los diálogos que hacíamos es que sentimos como que hay demasiadas preocupaciones para llevar adelante una escuela de agroecología. Sentimos que hay uh, demasiada prisa también Y en mi tierra dicen que el apuro trae cansancio. ¿Sí? Hay que ir lento, pero seguro. Y cuando escuchamos eso de que uh, hay muchos peros, decimos nosotros, muchas, como que vemos demasiadas limitantes. Eh, y es normal. Y Henry o Molly dijeron, queremos que ustedes nos apoyen porque no tenemos mucha idea de hacia dónde. Pero si es necesario. ¿Ya? Entonces, eh, creo que los argumentos de los grupos justifican de que sí es necesaria una escuela. Ahora, ¿por qué Vermont? Esa también fue una pregunta recurrente en nuestro grupo y tal vez en los otros. Y decían, es que aquí uh, tenemos muy poco, los ciclos de siembra son muy cortos, porque hay mucho frío y nieve el resto del, del año. Y reflexionábamos con, con Cristina, pero aquí en estas tierras, como en otros lados, ha vivido gente por milenios, mucho tiempo antes, y cultivaban la tierra y sobrevivían, ¿no? Claro, ahora el clima está más complicado y hay que pensar en otras cosas. Pero si sin celulares, sin computadoras, estos pueblos que estaban aquí cultivaban la tierra y vivían hace milenios, Nosotros ahora creo que podríamos hacer lo mismo, ¿no? Esa es la, la habilidad, la capacidad de la humanidad. Entonces, pues nada, decirles que eh, van a... Ah, lo otro, ¿por qué Vermont? ¿Y por qué no en otros lugares que podría haber más condiciones, más posibilidades? Y la invitación es... Vermont nos convocó para pensar esta escuela 
Pero la idea no es que solamente sea una escuela en Vermont, sino que sea una red de escuelas en Estados Unidos. Como en Latinoamérica ya tenemos una red de yalas y queremos que en cada país y dentro de cada país, en varias regiones de esos países, existan yalas, nuestras escuelas. Y nosotros esperamos que Estados Unidos, si Vermont nos convocó hoy, que más adelante en Florida, en Mississippi, en cada estado haya escuelas, pero que esas escuelas se vean de frente y se junten y discutan y aprendan y retroalimenten entre ellas. Esa es la invitación de este espacio. Entonces, mientras tanto, esperamos que la escuela en Vermont arranque en tres semanas, en tres meses, en seis, mañana, ayer. So just to recap, we're going to be compiling all of this feedback and we'll be sharing it with you and this will be an open door for continued conversation. So we have all of your contact information. I ha you have my email, you have emails for some of the organizers and we can share, um, share more of that information if folks are comfortable with it. And this is the beginning. And so we're gonna need you to help us determine what comes next. And I think partly we already did. And so this open door of communication will continue. And I know everyone needs a break. Um, and so we've got a lot of fun things planned tomorrow. Please keep having these conversations. Come talk to us. Come share your questions and concerns and the things that came up with your group. Um, we just, we want to hear. This is why we're all here. We're here to celebrate, but we're also here to learn. So before I turn everybody loose to take a quick break before we convene for our last workshop of the day, in, how about we'll do it at five o'clock. We'll stick with our schedule. Thank you.